Man, there's a lot of prophetic fulfillment happening. You're going to want to pay attention to this. If you would be so kind, please consider sharing this with someone because I believe they're going to get a really strong now word out of it. I, I have a lot I, get, I got to talk about. Um, <clears throat> first of all, let me start with this. Not only are we going to talk about uh, some of this presidential change that's going to happen because it's coming now, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. I'm also going to talk to you about a number of things, not only involving Disney, but what's going to happen regarding uh, some of this international uh, war and conflict. We're going to talk about that just a little bit. And then also this whole scenario around Twitter. I mean, if you're watching what just happened with Elon and Twitter and the fact that we prophesied much of this, I'm going to show you that video in just a second too, showing you that about a year or two two ago, we prophesied uh, some of these scenarios would take place, specifically mentioning Elon. I recently had a conversation with Lance Wall now, and we were discussing Elon. Um, a number of these type of scenarios are, are present and on the scene. So I also want to say to you, somewhere uh, probably by the end of the week, maybe by Friday, I'll have Lance Wall now on the program. And uh, also uh, Hank Kuneman, going to have both those guys uh, eventually in the next few days. Uh, different times on the program. You're going to really be blessed by that. I encourage you to keep watching. We'll announce that soon. Let me say something to you. There is a powerful shift happening in the atmosphere right now. And if you're paying attention to it, it's good. I had an epiphany the other day, and I need to share this with you before I jump into this information that I very much have a stirring over. Um, the, the epiphany I had was this. Let me start by saying this. Last fall, I began to have such an overwhelming prophetic sense, an overwhelming prophetic sense that there was going to be a very difficult catastrophe coming uh, to the planet, okay? And if you remember, you were following me, and I said that, and I began to discuss it, and I got into it. And it was so clear in my spirit, and I could see it. But the good news is, is because of years of teaching, revelation, interpretation, application, I didn't hit it too hard. In other words, I didn't say, this is the end, you know, grab your torches and pitchforks, dig a hole and hide, you know, I, I didn't go down that road. What I did though is I had an overwhelming sense and I was deeply troubled over what I sensed coming on the planet, over what I sensed coming on the planet. And then right in the middle of that, and you want to pay attention to this. This is very important, especially for prophetic people. So we don't end up in an echo chamber. So we don't say things wrong and we don't mislead people and we don't hurt people. Right? So what happened is, is then I was praying and interceding every morning. I'm telling people about stuff. And then all of a sudden the Southwest pilots stood up like as a revolt and it was a sign. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, and the truckers will stand. And then that happened in January. I, that was in October. I shared that that happened in January. And of course that, that played out and there's, there's probably more to come with that. I'm just saying that played out. Now, what am I getting at? The point is I had a prophetic unction that it was not going to be bad. It was going to be worse. I didn't declare it to that level, but I had, I had a strong sense. And if you're watching and, and, and sharing uh, these videos at that time, you'll realize that's what we were, we were leaning on. Like, Hey, it's going to be bad. Get ready, everybody. You don't even know what's about to hit you. And the Lord was just pulling the reins in on me a little bit, saying, Joseph, just, just be cautious how far you go with some of this information. So here's my epiphany. We prayed, many people prayed, and the Lord brought intervention. Now, I'm going to share a quick scripture with you, and then I'm going to go into some of the current things that are happening. I have a lot to, I have so much in my spirit today that I'm going to unload on you. I think it's going to really help you, and the Lord is training me in real time here. I'm learning things. I was with Mario Murillo. He, he was on the, the broadcast, and I was talking with Mario, and Mario began to release information. We talked uh, before and after, and there was things coming through the man of God about a warrior spirit that would say, no, the devil's going to have the fight of his life on his hands if he thinks he can take America from us. And I, it just shot through me. And the spirit of the Lord said, pay attention to the man of God. And as Mario started to lay it down, I really said, Lord, that's it. That's it. It's the spirit of reformation. It's the spirit of the third great awakening. It's, it's what's beginning to happen. And we need to cooperate with the truth, cooperate with what we want to see, and not continue to just proclaim all the things that, that could be. Now, now, let me say this. Let me say this about it. This is really important that you begin to recognize this. Uh, Acts chapter 11. I want to show you something real quick here. Acts chapter 11, okay? Verse, let me jump down. Verse um, 27. Acts chapter 11, verse 27. Pay very close attention to what I'm saying because 
I believe it's going to not only help you, you probably, you may want to show this to someone because I think it'll really impact their life, what I'm about to show you. Uh, Acts chapter 11 and verse 27. The reason I want you to see this is because it has a pertinent now word to it. And I think it's going to bring a little bit of order to some things that are going on both prophetically and globally. And then I'm going to get into some of these issues. I have some, a lot of things I want to talk to you about. Acts chapter 11, verse 27, it says, and in these days, prophets came down. Prophets came down, or they came from, I shouldn't say down, they came from Jerusalem to Antioch, verse 28, then one of them named Agabus. Okay, listen now, this is New Testament, and this is what prophets do sometimes. Came down from, or they came from Antioch, then one of them named Agabus, one of them named Agabus, stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a famine throughout throughout all the world. Now, listen to me. A lot of people would say, would the Spirit of God actually show something negative that was coming in the future? Well, yeah. Agabus did it. New Testament prophet. Here he is. Agabus, by the Spirit of the Lord, showed that something bad was coming, okay? But here's the hope and here's the lesson. Pay attention, please. It says... Agabus stood up, showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Verse 29. Then the disciples, here, here, listen. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined, they determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. Verse 30. This they also did. This they also did and sent it by to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now, what am I saying? Well, what I'm saying is, is yes, the prophet saw something coming, but God's never going to show us terrible things to come without a plan, without action. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Why? For action. And if all that action is, is prayer, then it will bring change, okay? In the case in Acts chapter 11, verse 27 and on, when Agabus said a famine is coming, much like another prophet I know who said two years ago, food shortages are coming. And then the Manchurian candidate got up and he's like, oh, a, a food. we talked about it, food shortages are real, right? He goes down that road. Here's my point. When Agabus prophesied this, it was not for fear, trepidation, anxiety, not to cause people to go to inaction. Rather, the prophetic can point out things to come for the purpose of faith that causes mobilization. Okay, the red church, when we talk about this going red, it's the mobilized heart of God. It's the, the blood of Jesus that's, that covers us. That's why we use the color red. It's the blood of the lamb, the heart of God. We're going after this generation. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Uh, we overcome the evil one by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives even unto the death. Now that is what prophecy should do. So do we see things that are real and they could happen? Yes, but you got to realize prophecy is also like a navigational compass that you begin to recognize things happening. You see the potential for them, but it's also so you can pray and change the narrative, which I think we did last fall, and I think we're about to do again in 2022. Now, here's what I want to get into. There's a number of things that we prophesied. Number one, it's very fascinating what's happening right now in this presidential narrative. Let's look at this real quick here. You can see... Uh, you know, they're talking about so much that's going on with this genius right here, uh, this, uh, you know, really big genius. And it says, keep this low key. Biden's White House chief of staff solicited what? Money from Hunter Biden for VP residence. Emails revealed, oh, you've got to be kidding. Nobody, nobody would have called this. Nobody saw that one coming. You recognize what's going on there. Now you also have to see very clearly that this, this man right here, I'm going to talk about him, uh, DeSantis, and here's why I'm talking about him, because I believe DeSantis could be one potential replacement for Trump in 24. And people say, no, 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 he's coming back. I don't know about that yet because I still have words that I've given and things that we're going to discuss here today that I think are going to greatly help you. Now, let's look at this if we can. One of the things that I think is really important to understand 
is we're seeing what's going on with Disney. Now, I, I came on last week and I prophesied about Disney. I didn't quite get there. I, I went and watched the video again, and I saw I started with it, and I was about to say a number of things. I didn't even, didn't even get there. But I'm telling you right now, they're not too big to fail, and they're not too big to feel a very great amount of pressure in their pocketbook, okay? Disney's going to take a hit, okay? They're going to take a financial hit. Now, I believe we're going to begin to see the unraveling and the beginning of the end for Biden. I think that's coming now. I think we're going to begin to see it, and there's going to come a great shuffling of the cards. It is almost like it's by design and strategically happening right before our eyes, okay? So the fact that all of a sudden his son uh, is having scenarios come forward, and even the mainstream uh, uh, media is turning against him and starting to actually talk about it, all the stuff we all talked about for the last two and a half years is starting to come forward, this is going to be a serious transition. It's coming now. Okay, it's coming now. It's going to entangle. It's going to be difficult. And this is a setup either, either for this midterm scenario or it's a setup for 24 so they can transition and put another player in there. Now, a lot of people talking about Trump. And here's what I want to say about this. I don't know that he's going to run again. I don't know. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, he will. We got to do this. All I know, here's what I know. I began to prophesy almost a year and a half, two years ago now, I began to prophesy about 22 and 24. Do you mind? Can you, can you hang with me just for a second? I'm going to show you this, this prophetic word. I'm going to do it right off our YouTube channel, okay? So bear with me just for a moment because I want to show you some things that I prophesied and I want to talk about this because I think it's going to help you and I want to kind of navigate this together just for a moment. And then I want to get into one more thing. Hang here with me if you would. Watch this. Okay, so here's, here's the uh, YouTube channel. This is the Joseph Z YouTube channel. You could go on here and, and do all this. I have, of course, it's on Facebook and all this. But let me start talking about this. I'm going to go back, and one of the ways I'm going to work it is when you're on the channel and there's a specific video, then you have markers on each video. So you can go through prophecies or, or uh, chapters in each specific video, and I'm going to do that right now. But let's look at this here. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Let's see if I can do this without... Uh, ads popping up or whatnot. Here we go. I gave this prophecy February 8th, 2021. Let's see. I deal with this word specifically about the president. Here's my thoughts on it. Okay, okay this is when they were saying Trump was going to go back in uh, in March of 2021, and so I was confronting that in this video, but pay attention, please. Okay. They're saying in March. Oh, um, I want to say I have not seen this. Uh, what's going to begin to happen next, I believe, is going to be a populist movement. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've been watching me Watch last this. week, I did some homework and to see a new freedom technology. Okay, now I start to prophesy about a freedom technology. This is over a year ago, uh, February 8th, 2021. I begin talking about a new freedom technology that comes forward, and then I mention some names. Now, here's the important part about this, is I believe this new freedom tech is what happened with uh, Truth Social. I think this is all coming to the scene now, but I saw it then, and back then, this was not a major conversation, but it's here now, so pay attention to this. Okay, now, I don't know who's going to bring this forward, um, but it could be the former president, he might actually do something like that. I think that would be more powerful Free. than him even going back in right now. True and social. the reason I'm saying this is people are talking about this word, and honestly, I'm going to put a big old question mark by it. But if at this point, this does not happen the way they're saying it will happen. If Let me go to this next one. So here's the social media prophecy. A freedom tech one way or another. Now, will it come through the president? Maybe. Uh, will it come through... Um, uh, Elon and Don Jr. and all these people, this freedom technology that could come forward. I believe there's going to be a fresh social media voice. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen with some of the, the things that have gone down, but it could even be, and I have a strange sense that the, the chokehold could get very strong on social media. And then I see an, a window. Now pray with me about this because I see a this window is important. in social media where because of this freedom tech that could come forward, True uh, social. Of, of making freedom of speech cool again. <laughs> let's make freedom of speech great again. Right? Yeah, let's do that. And you realize that could begin to happen. Social media, it could actually, you could see things like, you know, Facebook and Twitter and all these different ones that have been the big, the big conglomerate companies that are coming out, they could actually begin to release some of their stranglehold and let people talk freely again. That could happen.
I know it's going the other way right now. I think that's what Elon just happen, did. But I have a sense that over this, there'd be enough pressure from this that it would make the market competitive again, where they'd say, my goodness, if they're doing this, we better get with the program and start treating people better, right? And what I have seen, and I've said this way before, and people actually criticized me about this. What I have. So here's what I want to talk about real quick, real quick. What I want to say is, is that although, yes, uh, we called some of this the freedom tech and all this stuff. So I believe that we saw this. And so I think it's now time to pray. Here's why. And I'm going to do that. I, I, I could show you another prophecy. I may do that yet. At the end of this same video, I even call out and I say, it's going to be guys like Mike Lindell and Elon Musk. Okay. So we bring that out in that same video. You can check that out. That's on our YouTube channel. You can, or on Facebook, you can go find it. Um, it's dated. I don't know when it's dated. March 6, 2021 is when we posted that. Now, listen, though, you can go check that out. But the, the point I'm making is this, is I believe the Lord showed us this would happen. I believe that we knew this would happen. And so we just got news in the last two days, all of us did, that Elon just bought a very big majority or a large shareholding uh, position in Twitter. What this says to me is this prophecy is what God's will is right now, that freedom of speech come back, okay? Now, it could even happen through Twitter. Who would expect it? Can you imagine if 45 gets back on Twitter because of the majority stockholder who allows that to happen? That would give such a position. Now, let me, let me talk about this, and I'm going to go back to the presidential conversation just for a moment. Now, there's been a lot of words given about Trump. I had a good talk with uh, uh, Hank and different ones about this. And everybody saw many different parts of this, okay? Many different parts about what's going on. Here's what I want to say about it. The Lord showed me, showed him, showed different people. I saw it all the way back to 2018 uh, going forward that, uh, that Trump would not win the election. And I think if all things were equal, yeah, it was, he won. But I think also it was a lot of um, foul play at hand. Let me show you that video. If you haven't seen it, I want to show that to you real quick. So we talk about it, but I want to show that to you if I can. So here we talk about this. I go into this on the video. We put this in here. Check this out. This is just me showing one clip of when I prophesied uh, that Trump would lose by a tech. So check this out. I've seen, I'll bring this over to here. What I have seen is during the election cycle, I said, I don't know. And I'd even put out titles like, if he wins, if the president wins, right. and all this stuff happens, uh, who knows what's going to happen here? And I kept seeing him lose through a voting scenario with technology. I've seen two different scenarios. The Lord showed me two different scenarios with President Trump, and I'm going to talk about it right now. I'm going to go on record. The Lord showed me two different scenarios. March 10th, I woke up 2020. Dream, and he did not win the election. I had a dream about it. I saw it wake up, and the Lord showed me there would be a ploy, and it involves technologies. Another one's coming that involves technology that's going to try to debunk Trump or to stop him, meaning debunk them according to their standard, not according to the real truth, but debunk him according to what's coming in regards to hijacking the election. I've been praying against uh, technological things that are going to try and stop him, the artificial intelligence algorithms that are going out that are going to try and siege and, and, and stop the election and uh, hijack it. And I don't know. Actually, I woke up and the Lord showed me a dream where he lost the election. I saw some things where there was negativity coming towards the president and he could lose the election. And I kept seeing him lose through a voting scenario with technology. And I shared that for a long time. I think we're going to get past March. And either way, how this goes, I think we're into a populist wake-up call. And then what I think is happening is 2022. Important. I believe in 2022, I think that we're going to have another opportunity. And as I keep saying, an opportunity to change this narrative one more time. I think there's going to come a strong argument against uh, the false voting narrative and all this. And then if we begin to have a win... In 2022, I think we have a very good opportunity in 2024, and maybe, just maybe, and people have been upset with me when I say this, maybe either he or the one he anoints or blesses That's it. will get in here. That's just it. Okay? Now, it could be Trump, but it could be uh, another one carrying the name Trump. It could be someone with his brand and his, his blessing on it, and this could begin to happen here. Again, to see this, and it's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. Let's go here real quick. Had a vision about whales. Now, business leaders, um, whales is a is a symbolic word for people that are worth a lot. This is important. They're worth a lot of finance. They're worth a lot of things and all this. And I believe this, there's a hidden level of business leaders that's going to come out. It's almost like they're a dying species. 
or they're an endangered species, but there's still new species in that small group. And the Lord began to speak to me because he showed me. Now, if you've been watching for, for months now, I've been talking about how business leaders will stand up and begin to fight forward. Whales represents business leaders. That's what I'm seeing. Business leaders. Let me give you the interpretation. Guys like Mike Lindell. This is before guys he like was a thing. Guys like Elon Musk. Yep. Guys that are going to stand up. And if you've been watching this Elon program Musk. for a long time, you realize I'm talking about there's going to be business leaders that induce revival. There's going to be business leaders that do unconventional breakthrough. There's going to be business leaders that do it. And the Lord began to speak to me again today. It said there's whales out there that they're a hidden group. There's business species leaders. of whales that have not been discovered. And they just found it in the news. So, But I'm seeing this unfold right now. And I believe this is what's happening. And so you're seeing this type of thing. I believe this is what's going to happen going forward. I believe there's going to be a populist movement. You're going to start to see business leaders standing up yep. and crying out in the marketplace and bringing revival because the institution of the church has failed in many areas. Yep. God's giving us an opportunity for a 2022 shakeup, something that could begin to happen here. Now, could we forfeit this? Absolutely. Could we begin to see a breakthrough? Absolutely. But I believe what really is happening, and this is my take on it, again, he might, maybe the prophets are dead on, and he's going back in in March. Man, would that be exciting. But I got to tell you, I haven't seen it. And so that being said, I believe what's happening is there's going to begin to be a stronger voice coming out, yep. a populist uprising. Yep. Things will begin to happen. And I think that there's going to come a voice to the nation like never before that will not be gagged and silenced. And I think, I think that's what's coming. Okay. Let me unpack that for a second. Now, I'm not saying that just to say all this, that, or the other. Look what we said. Here's what I'm saying is I believe that if we look at prophetic things, we begin to put them together and we unite with the right leaders and we unite the voices of God, I think we get a clear picture. So here's what could happen. Yes, could he come back? Absolutely, he could. At this point, it could also be someone like DeSantis. Now, I'm not saying it is DeSantis. I'm just saying it could happen that way. I believe God is bringing out strong leaders and the roar of the king, because I keep having this word that David is coming and David is coming. And when David steps on the scene, I think something very powerful is going to happen. Now, the word about anointed business leaders, and I gave that word, I was actually repeating a word that I'll have to go find the original one um, from some time before. The, the original word I gave on that was a year, a year or two previous to this video I just showed you. So nearly three years ago, I gave a word about how anointed business leaders would say, look, the institution of the church didn't do it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to stand up and we're going to fight and we're going to bring it. And then guys like Clay Clark stood up. And the Lord told me it would be offensive, it would be unconventional, it would begin to break the norms and values. And I'll tell you, Clay Clark, he stands up with a bunch of John the Baptist and anybody who's got a voice for change, anybody that wants to begin to contend, and he stands up and says, it's time to reawaken America. So he really was a fulfillment of that prophetic word that I began to share. So you see these guys that are coming forward. Elon Musk, over and over again, I've prophesied now about for three years, and here's why this is important, because he's going to be a voice from the world. He doesn't, he, he doesn't even know. He's just following what, what he thinks is right. And God is navigating that man in many areas. Now, a lot of people have criticized me and said, don't call him this. Don't say that about Elon. You know, he's, he's married to someone or he's not even married. He's got difficult things going on. He's got this and that happening. Yeah, I get it. I get it. The guy, he doesn't think like you. He's, he's not like a Bible-believing, Bible-studying believer, okay? But here's what I want to say to you. If they're not against God, they're for God, is what Jesus said. Remember when the disciples said, Lord, they're casting out demons in your name. Should we stop them? He said, do not stop them. No one can say that they're for us one moment and then be against us, okay? So here's what I think is going to happen. Either a new Trump could stand up or we could see a complete change around. I do think, uh, I, I think they're a little bit ashamed of Kamala. I think that she, they're ashamed of her. Um, I don't know how that's going to unfold just yet. I had visions about her. I think they could put her in the same way they did the Manchurian guy who's in there now. Uh, that could happen. But here's what I really want to say. Things like the Reawaken America tour. I, I've you know been there. I've been a part of that. Our security team ran that. Deepak and our gang ran a lot of that for this. Here's what I want to say about it. The challenge is, is that there's all kinds of voices that stand up there, but yet the truth is put forward. And it's a united front that God 
God's bringing. And I really like what Clay Clark's doing. And I'll tell you, it's powerful because the church should be doing it. So Clay, a businessman stands up and says, you know what? I'm going to get it done. Uh, lead, follow, or get out of my way. And the Lord spoke to me three years ago about guys like him. It's not just him, but there's a lot of guys like him. And here's what I'm saying. When I, when I prophesied this, the Lord said, Joseph, watch out that you're not offended by the type of people I use to speak and declare what's going to happen and what's going on. And so I began to prepare my heart because God's going to use a lot of offensive uh, reformers that begin to shake the institution. And none of these guys have it all right. None of these guys got it all perfect. It ain't about that. It's about the fact that either we do something or the whole thing burns. Okay, we do something or the whole thing burns. And I believe that's why God will even use people like Elon Musk to stand up. And it's not about how great he is or what he does or what he doesn't do. Here's the bottom line. The bottom line is, is I'll tell you what, God is going to use all the different avenues he can, anybody that'll hear his voice. It says in Proverbs, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. He governs and guides it. And God is going to begin to lead people forward. So I was having a conversation with Andrew Womack, okay? And um, I can't wait to get him on here. He's going to come on the program soon. And a lot of people have said, Joseph, you got to get Andrew on here. So I said, Andrew, let's, you want to do a program? He's like, yep, let's do it. So it's going to be good. We're going to have a lot of good conversation and things that are going to take place. Now, let me go into one more thing that I think is going to be very vital for us today. Very vital. This picture of Disney. One more time. I want to talk about this. I want to talk about the presidential change a little further. This picture with Disney. I tried to prophesy it a few days ago that Disney was going to take a financial hit. Okay. And they think out of their arrogance that they can't be shaken. I'm telling you, they're going to get shaken. They're going to get shaken because God loves kids and God loves his, his, his children and he wants to protect it. And when the eyes of the church get on it and we start to pray, we start to actually take action, then you're going to start to see change. And I'm telling you, there's going to be a shake up there. There's going to be some things that happen. They're going to try to hide it. They're going to try to conceal the wound that they are having, but they're going to bleed out. There's going to be some difficulty coming to the pervy house of mouse. I had people contacting me and saying, Joseph, you say things. <laughs> You say things, pervy mouse. It's like, yeah, the pervy house of mouse. Woo, get all them preverts in there. You know, and uh, that's what's going on. You got all these, uh, the, the house of mouse is down with the sickness, if you get my meaning. And here's what I want to say about this. I believe God is going to shake. He's going to shake that place because he's not going to have it. And here's what takes place. When the church is silent, when the church draws back and the church does not lean in and the church does not release its faith and the church does not speak of things, there's not as much that can be done. But all of a sudden now, you're going to see the, the pervy house on the, the radar. And when this is happening, we can begin to declare, decree, and prophesy, and pray. And then you're going to see effective change, just like what happened in this last fall with the whole economic standing. You know, we prophesied ships in the ocean, stuff being stuck out there. We're putting together a master list of prophecy and fulfillment that you're going to begin to really enjoy. Not for the sake, listen, I don't think I'm a big deal. I don't think that we get it all right. I don't think I'm the only voice out there. I think there's a lot of amazing prophetic voices. I think that you can hear God clearly as anybody if you're in the word and you're listening, okay? And I've, I'm trying to be a uniter, not a fighter against voices of God who've been both persecuted, hit it, missed it. I don't really care. The point is, what are you doing today? Are we making Jesus Lord? Are we taking territory together, right? And we need to stop fighting and start uniting. If we fight, we lose. And all these people are like, I'm going to criticize these leaders. I'm going to criticize that person. I'm telling you, that's the wrong spirit. Jesus is head of the church and anyone, and I don't care who it is, uh, criticizing leaders right now, they need to back up the bus a little bit and say, be careful. You're sowing seed. You may not want to reap. Okay. You're sowing unreasonable seed that may come against you. And you'll say, but I'm innocent. It'll just keep coming. Okay. Criticism and the native tongue of the uninspired is always criticism. Now here's what I want to say in addition to this regarding this presidential narrative, man, I think very clearly we're going to see a shakeup now. It's coming fast. Now, not only do we see, uh, not only do we see China and Russia teaming up. If you're, like I said, if you're watching the small news and you're paying attention to the small news, you're going to begin to see China and Russia teaming up. Is it Gog and Magog? Is this the end? I'll let you read the Bible and let you come to your conclusion. Here's what I want to say. What I know is we're here today. We're preaching the gospel and the gates of hell cannot overcome the ecclesia. The gates of hell. The gates of hell, 
the gates of hell cannot stop the real church of Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus said. And if Jesus' words mean anything, he said those gates, the system of the world and the zeitgeist of the culture cannot overcome the real church of Jesus Christ, the red church, those that are washed in the blood of the lamb, those that stand up. And I believe that the gates of hell cannot stop this. So we need to quit criticizing and realizing they can't take territory anyway. Jesus is head of the church. And those of you who are criticizing, stop it. I'm telling you, stop it. Don't like videos where they're pulling out and destroying preachers and ripping people apart. Let God deal with that. Let God deal with that. Your job is to pray, to bless and curse not, and watch God deal with the head of his own church. Jesus is head of the church. He takes care. Judgment begins in the house of God, not by the people of God, but by him who walks among the lampstands, okay? You're not called to walk among the lampstands and judge which one you're going to tear down. That's Jesus's job. And if you get in that position, you don't want to reap the kind of reward that comes with that. There's a lot of naivety that goes on with that stuff, and you need to stop it. Anybody that's doing it, I'm, I'm telling you by the Spirit of the Lord, stop it, okay? All right, I love you. But uh, listen, here's the other thing. In that same picture, not only are we going to see a shakeup going on on Twitter, not only are we going to see all these things happening, but we're going to begin to see uh, the shakeup in Disney. Twitter, I think, is going to be, as we prophesied, a transitional platform that could be a sign and a wonder. That the very platform that first started censoring and throwing people to the side and saying, you can't do this, a sitting president, a sitting president, a sitting president that could no longer have his voice heard, that's un heard of in a generation was was completely put, disregarded and put to the side now where you still have all these horrible groups and people doing all this stuff and they can't get on there and they can't say things or they can but he can't i think something's going to shift really rapidly now one more thing about the presidential scenario let me say this hallelujah to the lamb we're going to pray what i think is going to take place is I think it's either we're going to see 45 come back because he just can't take it. I think when I look at that man, and this is just me, maybe I'm wrong, but when I look at that man, I don't see someone that wants to jump back into office. That's what I sense in my spirit when I look at him. I see someone that doesn't want to jump back into office. Doesn't mean he won't, but I see someone that's like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it. I'll stand, I'll do it, but I think he's going to anoint and appoint. He'll either do it, or he's going to anoint and appoint. It'll either be one of his kids, or it'll be a guy like DeSantis, or it'll be someone else with fire in the tank, okay? Because the spirit of David is coming one way or another. So it either comes through the people that are going to stand up like a populist uprising, or it's going to come exactly through the leader we're all, we're all talking about, or it's going to come through uh, another individual with fire in the tank. And the Lord's going to begin to do that. And there's many things that take place. Remember, remember when John the Baptist stood up, people prophesied and they said, this is is Elijah who is to come. They said, are you Elijah? That's what they said to John. Pay attention to what I'm saying. I'm prophesying right now. When the people asked him and the Pharisees said to to John the Baptist, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. But then later Jesus says, Jesus says about John the Baptist, he said, if you can hear it, I tell you, he is Elijah who was to come. What? So John did not declare himself Elijah. He said, no, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness, declare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord. And then what happened? What happened? Jesus said, no, he actually was Elijah who was to come. You got to understand some of these prophetic implications, meaning that sometimes even the person that is called to do something doesn't see what the real authority sees on them. And the spirit of Elijah is what came forward. The spirit of Elijah is what was was coming on the scene to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. And the spirit of David is coming with a leadership, uh, uh, apostolic horsepower, and it's either going to come through the populist people or it's going to come through a leader. It's coming one way or another. It's here. Now, Andrew, we were just at a conference this past weekend, all right? And Andrew stood up by the spirit of the Lord and he said, the third great awakening is not coming. It's here. God told him that. Okay, Andrew Womack did. And he's a prophet of God. People look at him like he's just a teacher. I'm telling you, Andrew's a prophet. I've had conversations. I've asked him that very directly. Are you a prophet? Yes. He's a prophet of God. He's got that Navi Roe thing going on. But Andrew, when he hears God and it's clear, 
we should pay attention. And he said, the great awakening hasn't, it's not coming, it's already started. And the Lord began to minister to me and say, Joseph, this is it. We're stepping into it like never before. I feel the spirit of God right now. The spirit of the Lord is saying so clearly to us, it's not about who's leading the nation, it's who's leading the body of Christ. And we need to get in motion with this. We need to begin to line up. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I begin to come into agreement with everybody watching this broadcast right now. We, we reach out and we pull down the high places over the White House. We reach out and we pull down the strongholds over our nation, over the nations of the world. We come into agreement with the Spirit of the Lord. We come into agreement with Jesus Christ. We come into agreement by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And we love not our life even unto the death. In Jesus' name, victory is coming. Momentum is is coming. The spirit of the Lord is coming. And every bit of discouragement you've been facing, every bit of crisis fatigue, I break it off you right now in Jesus' name. I break it off you. I'm telling you the sons and daughters, the spirit of Elijah is coming and the spirit of Elijah is going to begin to push back the darkness. We're going to rescue these young lions that are deceived in Jesus' name. If the devil thinks he's going to take America, he's going to have a fight on his hands he's never, ever had before. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you, and He's anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent you to bind up the brokenhearted, to declare liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set those free who are in prison, in Jesus' name, to declare the favorable year of the Lord. And God is bringing a way where there's been no way. I'm telling you right now, I am not going to get on the train that says America's going down. I'm going to get on the train that America's going up. I'm reminded. I had a day vision. I had a night vision the other day, but I had a day vision as I was standing at this conference this weekend, or actually Sunday morning church. That's when it was. Pay attention to this. I I need to say this as clearly as I can to you. I had this this day vision, and all of a sudden I was caught up for a moment. I began to see America. I began to see America. Here's what I saw. Man, thank you for reminding me of this Holy Spirit. I began to see America in this day vision on Sunday. And as I began to see America, I saw it going, and then I saw it downgraded. I saw America going through a very big humbling. And I said, Lord, is this the end? Because years ago, remember, I was standing in Trump Tower. Um, Standing in Trump Tower. Well, we know in part, we prophesy in part. And that's how it works. Anybody says that this is how it is, emphatically, no wiggle room. Um, That's not a New Testament scenario. In the New Testament, we all have God's voice and we hear God's voice. Now listen, my sheep hear my voice. Now, what I saw is this, America having a downgrade. I saw it. And it was going to go through this downgrade moment. I said, God, is this the end? Because a number of years ago, I was in Trump Tower. I said, is this the end of America, God, before he announced before any of this? And the Lord spoke to me and said, no, America has one more round in it. That was in the beginning of 2015 or somewhere in 2015. I prophesied America's got one more round in it. And then because the young lions were coming, the young lions were coming. I believe very strongly and very powerfully right now that what is going to happen is there's going to be a downgrade. There's going to be a humbling, and I believe that it's going to get the attention of all the institutions. I believe that this is going to take place, and then the young lions are going to come, and then they're going to come. They're going to stand up. They're going to roar, and I think it's going to shake, and I think America will have one more round even after a, I don't know how to say it any better, even after um, a shaking and a humbling, but I don't think it's the end. I don't think it's the end. And I started to have hope rise up in me. And I said, Lord, thank you for the hope. Thank you for showing me this. So I think some of that's going to happen. And I think the young lions are going to come. And I think we, you know, like when certain stock goes down, but then over time, all of a sudden, surprise, it comes back up and becomes number one. I think that's what's going to happen. I think we're going to begin to see the United States go through a moment where it goes down. I think the shaking is going to happen. I think we're going to get to 24 and beyond. And I think we have a great opportunity. I really do. And people are like, why do you say I think? Because we know in part, we prophesy in part. And I'm being responsible by the Spirit of the Lord to say exactly what I see. And I'm doing my best to interpret what I see. It's important. We need a better hermeneutic in prophecy. 
art and science of interpretation. So I saw this and what I sense strongly is that we could begin to see that happen, but then we're gonna have a recovery, a recovery and then I saw longevity if we stand in boldness and we don't shrink back. I'm telling you, any ministry that shrinks back right now and they're all about, oh no, no, we don't wanna talk issues, they're not gonna find the same favor that people that stand up in boldness. I'm not talking about uh, anger, bitterness, crazy stuff where people are just trying to make a name for themselves by saying shocking things. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those that stand in boldness, clear-eyed, clear-mindedness, love in their heart, and begin to speak the truth. That's what this generation needs. And the young people are craving it. They're craving it. Man, I got so much more to tell you. Jesus is Lord. I want you to please consider reposting this to everybody you can. Because I think that we have a now word happening. I think that the presidential change is coming. I think uh, Disney, Twitter, what's going on between Russia, China, all these things that are happening. I think there's going to be a unwinding of what's going on in Ukraine. Okay, the people are suffering, but there's an unwinding that's going to happen. And there's going to be a lot revealed that's going to shock people what's actually happened there. Now, here's the other thing. Let me say these final points. Very important. This is really important. And uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to stop very soon. But I, I really have an unction to tell you one more thing. That's right. Fear not. I like that. Everybody shout out going red today. When we say going red, it means fear not. The blood of Jesus. We're talking about our covenant. We're the red church. The blood of the lamb is on us. We overcome the evil one by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That's why we say going red. Because it's the blood of Jesus we're talking about. Here's what I want to say. I think they'll never waste a good crisis. And I think what's going on in China could happen here. I really do. I think our prayer, I think our prayer can stop it. I think our prayer can stop it. And so we're going to pray in just one moment and then we're going to be done. I think that there could be another pandemic. They try to intentionally get going. And I think it's going to, they've already weaponized uh, the, the thought process. They've done a bunch of group think. They've got a bunch of people with lemming, March of the Lemming behavior where they're going to say, oh yeah, we all know what we need to do now. Get them diapers on your face and go ahead and pump up with another round of Mark of the Beast precursor practice serum. Get it in your system today. And that way after your 27th dose, you might not even be human anymore. I think they're going to push that one more time. Um, I think we can stop it through prayer because there can be God can intervene on such a global level that it shakes and embarrasses. Here's all that has to happen. It hits their pocketbook. It has a, a possibility of great exposure for them. And people change their song real fast. A lot like when uh, those, those, uh, those wicked leaders that began to come against uh, our police force. And they begin to say, you know, uh, take all their resources away. Don't let them have resources. And now they're saying, no, we didn't say that. Actually give them resources. What a bunch of liars. What a bunch of liars. But the same is true. You know why they did that? Because we stood up. Because people said, how dare you? And they realized it was not good for them, especially going into the midterms, to be against our law enforcement who stand up for us every day. Okay? I've done ride-alongs with them, and I love them, and all this. Now, that being said, I think they're going to do whatever they can to stop the midterm scenario. Now, all this stuff with the laptops coming out with uh, uh, the, the guy's kid and rhymes with Hunter, uh, all that that's coming out, I'm telling you, there's going to be a great shaking in this. Now, we need to pray. So let's pray right now. And let's wind this up because, man, I get on a, a roll sometimes. I try to keep this under 30 minutes for you guys, but it's important. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we begin to push back against darkness. We, we come against crisis fatigue. We begin to speak against another pandemic. We push it back. We, we speak against it in Jesus' name. We stop it in Jesus' name. We stand in the light in Goshen right now in the name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, I request in the very courts of heaven, God, as it says in Hebrews 4, come boldly to the throne of grace. We begin to request right now in Jesus' name, for victory for the righteous. And we push back against the spirit of antichrist and control. We push you back right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare Jesus is Lord over America. Jesus is Lord over Canada. Jesus is Lord over Brazil. Jesus is Lord over Mexico. Jesus is Lord over 
uh, Europe. Jesus is Lord over all the nations, over South Africa and the whole continent of Africa. Jesus is Lord over all the nations of the world. Whatever nation you're from, somebody shout out your nation and say, Jesus is Lord. Somebody shout out going red today by faith. We declare the blood of Jesus over the White House. We declare the blood of Jesus over this government. We declare the blood of Jesus and we begin to push forward in faith and our covenant in Jesus Christ today and we begin to stand up for truth and we begin to agree that Jesus Christ is Lord. No wicked thing, no evil shall befall this nation or any plague come near its dwelling for the Lord God is a sun and shield and the Lord bestows favor and honor and no good thing will he withhold to them who walk uprightly and I declare that is you today and your family's blessed and increase is upon you in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, favor, righteousness, and increase is yours. I believe there's a special anointing for prosperity and victory for those who are standing up today. And I encourage you, if you partner here, I will not apologize for the increase that is on us and the increase that gets on your life. Uh, our ministry has broken records because of the boldness God's given us, and I'm so grateful for it. We're having an announcement very soon about the plane and where that's headed. Thank you for standing with us. You can, if you're a partner, thank you. If you want to partner and join the fight and help us take territory, josephz.com is how you do that. Or you can text the keyword give to 719-259-0029. We have a lot of events coming up, some powerful announcements very soon. Be watching. Uh, probably this week, I'm going to have Lance Walna on the program. We're going to have Hank Kuneman very soon. And uh, uh, it looks like uh, Andrew Womack is going to be on soon too. It's going to be great. So I can't wait. And uh, I love Andrew. He's just... He, when he stands up and talks, it's like dad's talking, you know, well, <laughs> he gets up, starts talking. And you're just like, oh man, he's the man of God. Now, listen, I love you all so much. Jesus is Lord. And I'm grateful that you're here. Please consider helping us today. If you want to tithe here, you're welcome to tithe here. If you feel like you're fed here, if you want to give or sow or do whatever God calls you to do, if you have a company and you want to stand with us, thank you. We are only going to take more territory. We're only going to confront the darkness. We're only going to rescue those staggering off to the slaughter. Jesus is Lord. Please consider standing and partnering today. Uh, go to justice.com. We got all these shirts about going red, building lives by the voice of God. And, and um, there's so much more you can get a hold of uh, there. We got patriotic t-shirts. Pick yourself out a patriotic t-shirt today, josephz.com and uh, all that. And it's so, so funny. We, uh, we have School of the Prophets and we ran low on it. So we're going to have to get more of that coming soon. And you're going to want to check that out. We got a lot of material that'll help you greatly. And uh, we got a lot coming. So I love you guys. Jesus is Lord. Thanks for being our partners. Thank you so much. And um, all the information's there. If you partner, you're going to hear from us. Our team will call you, love you, pray over you. And it's going to be a blessing. God bless you. Don't you shrink back. Jesus is Lord. I will see you again tomorrow, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I think we're going to have a live broadcast tonight. I might have a special guest on there. You might want to watch 7 p.m. tonight. God bless you guys. That's Mountain Time. God bless you guys. I'll see you soon. Please repost this. It'll help someone. God bless. Bye, everyone.